today's reading, the promise of a child for Sarah and Abraham is finally fulfilled. Abraham is 100, Sarah is 90 and they have waited 25 years. But now the baby is here, a little boy, and they call him Isaac, which means he laughs. A reminder for Sarah about her laughter, but that laugh of incredulity has now turned into a laugh of absolute delight at the arrival of her miracle baby. When Isaac is about three years old, he's weaned and there's a family celebration. And at some point during that party, Sarah sees Ishmael teasing Isaac. Now Ishmael is Abraham's firstborn son. When Sarah had realised she was way beyond the age when she was, humanly speaking, able to give Abraham the promised son, she takes matters into her own hands and gives Hagar, her Egyptian servant, to Abraham, um, to, in effect, to have a surrogate child. And as a result of that union, Ishmael was born. But that wasn't God's plan, and actually it was a disaster from the very beginning. But having seen Isaac being teased is the final straw for Sarah and she decides that Ishmael and Hagar have to leave immediately. And Abraham initially is devastated because after all Ishmael is his firstborn son and he has spent years loving him, caring for him, no doubt teaching him how to look after sheep and all sorts of other life skills. But he prays about it and God says, no, it, this is the right course of action and um, that in fact Ishmael is not going to share the inheritance which Isaac is going to have. But he does promise that he'll look after Ishmael. So early the next morning, um, Hagar and Ishmael are sent away and Hagar, Abraham gives, a, Abraham gives Hagar uh, as much water and food as she can carry and sends them off into the desert. In the desert the water doesn't last very long, maybe two or three days at the most, and they must both have got more and more thirsty. And eventually they're exhausted and Hagar leaves Ishmael lying in the shade of a bush and then walks on a bit further herself and then sits she can't bear to watch her son die. She's, she's lost everything and it must all have seemed so unfair. After all, Ishmael hadn't been her idea and now she's been sent away from Abraham and the camp and she has nothing left and Ishmael is going to die and God had promised her that Ishmael would live and would be free, not a slave like his mum. Um, that he would be free like a wild donkey, that he would have many descendants, and it was all coming to nothing. But in that moment, God hears Ishmael and shows Hagar where there's water, and she's able to get water from a well, probably a hole in the ground surrounded by some scrubby bushes, and she gives water to Ishmael and has some herself, and they're, they're both saved. God's promise is fulfilled. There are many, many promises which we have been given by God. And if you Google God's promises to us, you'll come up with a long, long list. Um, God has given us salvation. He's given us eternal life. Um, he promises to answer prayers. He gives us peace. He's a good God. He has plans for our lives many, many other things. The list goes on and on. And God will keep those promises. Sometimes the answers are immediate. Other times, like Abraham, Ham and Sarah, we may have to wait. And on other occasions, we may have to, like Hagar, get to the end of ourselves before the promise is fulfilled. But we can know with absolute certainty that those promises are for real and God will fulfil those promises in his time.